Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. Thank you so much for being with us. We're going to be looking at the Reims Dewey Bible, sometimes called the Dewey Reims, and it's a Catholic English Bible, 1582, 1609. We'll go into that in just a minute. Just here on Wikipedia, going into it, we've been trying to do every, a little review of every English Bible translation, so be sure to check out our playlist. Also, I have hundreds of other Bibles, study Bibles, and commentaries, probably over a thousand of those uh, other books to help study, as well as teachings and our church services on here. Join us. So let's get started. Okay, the Dewey Reams Bible. I remember the first time Greg Taylor, when I sold Bibles at Berean Christian store told me about the Dewey Reams Bible. He was going to Beulah Heights Bible College. And uh, it says this, It is a translation of the Bible from the Latin Vulgate into English made by members of the English College Douay in the service of the Catholic Church. Douay is in France. The New Testament portion was published in Reims, France in 1582 in one volume with extensive commentary and notes. The Old Testament portion was published in two volumes 27 years later in 1609 and 1610 by the University of Douay or Douay. The first volume covering Genesis through Job was published in 1609. This is the Old Testament. The second covering Psalms, the second Maccabees, plus three apocryphal books of the Vulgate Appendix follows the Old Testament, Prayer of Manassas, Third of Je Esdras, and Fourth Esdras, was published in 1610. Marginal notes took up the bulk of the volumes and had a strong polemical and patristic character. They offered insights on issues of translation and on the Hebrew and Greek source texts of the Vulgate. So, okay, it comes out in 1582, then they update the Vulgate, the Clementine Vulgate, in 1590. And so, some things there. And this later went on in like 1749, 1750, to get uh, redone by... Uh, Chalnier, and that's a very famous and popular translation today. But uh, let's keep going here. The purpose of the version, both text and notes, was to uphold Catholic tradition in the face of the Protestant Reformation, which until the time of its publication had dominated Elizabethan religion and academic debate. I think she'd kicked all the Catholics out of England. As such, it was an effort by English Catholics to support the Counter-Reformation. The New Testament was reprinted in 1600, 1621, and 1633. The Old Testament volumes were reprinted in 1635, but neither thereafter for another hundred years. Now, I've done a review on this, I think, years ago. I don't even know if I could find it on the channel. In 1589, William Falk You'll hear me mention Falk's refutations quite a bit. I got this from Stillwater's Revival books, if I remember, way back in the day. William Falk collated the complete Reims text in notes and parallel columns with those of the Bishop's Bible, 1568. The work sold widely in England, being reissued in three further editions to 1633. It was predominantly through Falk's editions that the Reims New Testament came to exercise a significant influence on the development of 17th century English. Much of the text of the 1582-1610 Bible employed New Testament 1582, Old Testament 1610, and employed a densely Latinate vocabulary, making it extremely difficult to read in places. And so Chalnier came out with the New Testament in three editions, 1749, 1750, 1752, and the Old Testament minus the Vulgate Apocrypha in 1750. And it actually took its text base from the King James, and it was updated in a series of Dublin editions from 1783 to 1810 by Bernard McMahon. All right, so let me just read just a little more. I think you'll find it interesting. I know I have. Following the English Reformation, some Catholics went in exile to the European mainland. Remember, Bloody Mary had had all the Protestants go to Geneva. You know, they had fled. Uh, the center of English Catholicism was the English College at Douay, University of Douay, France, founded in 1568 by William Allen, formerly of Queen's College, Oxford, and Canon of York, and subsequently Cardinal. Here was a purpose, for the purpose of training priests to convert the English again to Catholicism. Don't think that stuff doesn't go on. Like, the Catholic Church still has colleges to 
trained to convert countries to Catholicism. And uh, that's just historical record. A run of a few hundred or more of the New Testament in Cordo, that's a mid-size, not large folio, was published in the last months of 1582. That's Herbert 177. He did a huge uh, inventory of English Bibles during a temporary migration of the college to Reims. Dewey went to Reims. Consequently, it has been commonly known as the Reims New Testament. Though he died in the same year, publication, the translation was principally the work of Gregory Martin and a uh, close friend of Edmund Campion. He was assisted by others at Douay, notably Allen, Richard Bristow, and Thomas Worthington, who proofed and provided notes and annotations. The Old Testament is stated to have been ready at the same time, but for one of funds, it cannot be printed until later. Now, it says, as a recent translation, the Reims New Testament had an influence on the translators of the King James Version. Now, see, in reading the translators to the readers, doesn't Miles Smith say they haven't seen this version yet? I don't know. I thought they did. Um, but then they were, uh, they really criticized the difficult Latin in there. So it's a translation of a translation. It's a translation of the Latin Vulgate. People could say, well, the King James is a translation of a, a translation, the Bishop's Bible. Not so much, as a matter of fact. That's another long story. I've done some teaching on that in times past, but you can study that. Um, here's some uh, fascinating things. I'm fixing to read Ephesians 3, 6 through 12. The Gentiles to be coheres and corporate and co-participant of his promise in Christ Jesus. Now, Jesus is all caps. And I'm wondering if they're not trying to emphasize either his deity or the fact that he's Jehovah. By, because all caps in the Old Testament was tetragrammaton. It was Jehovah. The gospel. Wherever I made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, which has given me according to the operation of his power. To me, the least of all the saints is given this grace among the Gentiles to evangelize the unsearchable riches of Christ and to illuminate all men what is the dispensation of the sacrament hidden from worlds in God who created all things that the manifold wisdom of God may be notified to the princes and potestates in the celestial by the church according to the prefinition of worlds which he made in Christ Jesus again Jesus all caps our Lord in whom we have affiance and access in confidence by the faith of him. See, now there's parts of that that's really smooth. There's parts of it, yeah, a little difficult. Other than uh, rendering the particular readings of the Vulgate Latin, the English wording of the Reims New Testament follows more or less closely the Protestant version first introduced by William Tyndale. I thought that was so interesting. An important source for the Reims translators having been identified is that the revision of Tyndale found in an English and Latin diglot New Testament published by Miles Coverdale in Paris 1538. Coverdale's an interesting guy too. Amazing. Furthermore, the translators are especially accurate in their rendition of the definite article from Greek to English in their recognition of subtle distinctions of the Greek past tense, neither of which is capable of being represented in Latin. Consequently, the Reims New Testament is much less a new version and owes rather more to the original languages than the translators admit in their preface. Where the Reims translators depart from the Coverdale text, they frequently adopt readings from the Protestant Geneva Bible. I thought that was fantastic. Or those of the Wycliffe Bible, as this latter version has been translated from the Vulgate and has been widely used by English Catholic churchmen, unaware of its Lollard origins. Kind of stating that Wycliffe was a Lollard, or anyhow, we won't go into all that. Nevertheless, it was a translation of the translation of the Bible. Uh, there was another thing, let me see if I can find it here. Well, we'll just read this. In their decision consistently to apply Latinate language rather than everyday English to render religious terminology, the Reams Dewey translators continue their tradition established by Thomas More and Stephen Gardner in their criticisms of biblical translations of William Tyndale. Uh, Gardner indeed had himself applied these principles in 1535 to produce a heavily revised version, which unfortunately has not survived. Uh, do, do, do. 
let's go into this. In England, the Protestant William Folk unintentionally pro uh, popularized the Reims New Testament through his collation of Reims text and annotations alongside the 1572 Protestant Bishop's Bible. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Folk's work was first published in 1589, and so it became available. The Reims did without criminal sanctions. The translators of the Reims appended a list of these unfamiliar words. Examples include acquisition, adulterate, advent, allegory, verity, culminate, or calumniate, excuse me, character, cooperate, prescience, resuscitate, victim, and evangelize. In addition, the editors chose to transliterate other uh, than translate a number of technical Greek or Hebrew terms such as azymes for unleavened bread and posk for Passover. Well, I guess that's all I'll do. I, I was looking for a part uh, where it said one of the other things they did with the Geneva, is that it? No. Nope. Is like the Geneva Bible, they chose to put it in Roman type, which is far easier to read than Gothic type. So that's pretty interesting. And when we do our review on the Chalnier vert revision, I, uh, I think I've done like a review of a Chalnier Bible itself, but we're going to do a review of the translation. We'll find out how fascinating it is that he went back to using the King James. And that's the reason basically it's still used today in so many areas is because of its affinity to the King James. So God bless you. You'll see the King James kind of ran this off the field. They didn't print it after 1635. They reprint it now, but you know, as a popular thing because the King James just ran everything off the field because it was so good. So we'll talk with you later. God bless. Check out our playlist. Check out our other videos. Join us daily. Check out our church services on here. Glad you're here. God bless you. Bye-bye.